In the 1660s, the English and the Dutch were at war. The resolution to their conflict gave the Dutch a small colony on the northeast coast of South America. In exchange, England claimed New Amsterdam, later to be called New York. The South American territory was rich in timber, coffee, and sugar, and the African slaves who worked its plantations were victims of exceptional cruelties. In Voltaire's Candide, the title character meets a Suriname slave who tells him, When we labor in the sugar works and the mill happens to snatch off a finger, they instantly chop off our hand, and when we attempt to run away, they cut off a leg. It is at this expense that you eat sugar in Europe. In the face of such brutalities, some of the Africans fled the plantations, fought for freedom, and successfully forged a life in the surrounding rainforest. Today, the Saramakan people of Suriname are among the descendants of those who escaped slavery over 300 years ago. The Saramakan culture, rooted in West Africa and shaped by Caribbean and European influences, is distinct. The Saramakan language, rich in the stories of a turbulent past. Although their freedom was secured by treaty in 1762, Saramakans have faced hardships, particularly in the 20th century. A hydroelectricity project flooded and relocated entire Saramakan villages. Civil war claimed many lives and forced thousands to leave their homes. More recently, Saramakan land and villages have been threatened because of government concessions to foreign timber and mining companies. True to form, the Saramakan people led the fight to protect their land and rainforest resources. In 2007, the Inter-American Court for Human Rights decided in favor of the Saramakan people in a precedent-setting case that allows all indigenous peoples of the Americas to decide for themselves how their lands and resources are used. <laughs>